Welcome back to Tech Talk. Today we're going to be talking about mental health. So we have here me, Nyla. I am a senior in the Graphic Print Communications Magnet. Um, hey guys, it's Blake again. I'm in Graphic Print Magnet as well, and I'm also a senior. Hey guys, I'm Imani. I'm new to the podcast. Um, I'm a senior, and I was in Environmental Tech. I'm Lila. I'm also new to the podcast. I'm in 11th grade, a junior, and I'm in Academy of Health Professions. We're going to, like, start off talking about what stressors for the different grades. Uh, okay, so to begin with freshman year, we think that some of the biggest stressors is definitely the transition from middle school to high school because this could be your first time going to a whole new school and you're meeting so many new people, and it can be overwhelming. I definitely understand that, and I remember my freshman year. Even though I did know a lot of people were coming from my middle school, I still did Sub meet. <laughs> yep, I did meet oh a my lot gosh. of people. Sudbrook, like, there's so many Sudbrook people. It it's is. Crazy. There are. But, like, recently there isn't. It's kind of weird. Like, it, it is weird. There's, like, a lot, a lot of more diverse, like, in, like, middle schools. Yeah. Which I guess is good for making friends, because a bunch of people. Because when we were in, like, when I was for seniors, when we were, like, in freshman year, it was just Sudbrook kids. And then everybody else. No, like, we literally. were our own population. And I think that, like, the first person, like, everyone saw, like, you try to, like, talk to you right away and, like, try to be yeah. friends with, which is, like, stressful because you're, like, are you going to actually stay friends with the person, like, who are their other friends type yeah. deal? It's, it's definitely scary. But eventually you'll get the hang of it. I think it definitely, it comes with time. But also, if you get involved in a lot of things, like, I got involved with sports really early in the year, so I made a lot of friends through there. I was about to say, getting involved in sports and different clubs definitely eases the pressure and, like, the um, anxiety people have with it. So I feel like getting involved is just a way to make it better. Yeah, we're going to talk about, like, coping skills a little bit later, but, like, sports is, like, just a big one for, like, everyone here because we all play a sport. <laughs> So we can all, like, preach the sport thing. And just a plug, just a plug, if you didn't listen to the last one yeah. about sports and being a student athlete. Get into that, like, right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, after this. Yeah, after, <laughs> after this one. So another stressor for freshmen is balancing schoolwork and understanding Western tech. Because the schoolwork given at Western tech, it can be a lot, especially the workload and the extra homework and the classes that are harder compared to other schools. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about this, like, maybe at another time, because this is a whole thing in itself, but we all know that Western Tech is, like, crazy about academic validation, and as an incoming freshman, when we you- We were not ready. Yeah. yeah. I was not ready. We're not ready for that. Not. When people were crying about getting, like, 90s, like, that's <laughs> when you knew you were in for it, so- <laughs> just, I just think coming yeah. from such a laid-back middle school, and, well, I don't think summer was, like, a little more intense, but- I didn't go to, like, a subbrook where we had magnets and stuff like that. Right. So I was at a very, like, laid-back, chill middle school. And then being, like, thrown into that, I don't think I was fully prepared. Um, yeah. So yeah. that is, like, a stressor. Yeah. Because, like, you think you're, like, so worse off than everybody else. But I promise right. you, there's always someone worse than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean real. real. There's also, like, the problem with a lot of – freshmen especially this year like they're coming off of a covid year yeah. so yeah. middle school can't really prepare you online for the amount of work that western tech is going to throw at you and obviously you're going to have all like the coach classes and things like all the teachers are going to be willing to help but it is overwhelming as a freshman to become and coming off of covid coming into like western tech and just being thrown at with all this like work like you have an essay due in two weeks you have all this like it's a lot i yeah, understand i respect to y'all i don't think i would be able to do that but like didn't you literally do it like you were senior? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> actually, in respect to y'all, because coming from being in COVID in middle school, like, that's oh, kind of crazy. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. crazy. Like, y'all were barely in middle school, and then y'all go to high school. But, like, respect to y'all for trying. Yeah, so next we're talking about sophomore year. And I feel like sophomore year was, well, it was virtual for us seniors. But I feel like even not being a senior, it's one of the more, like, chill years but there is stressors involved, even though it's, like, pretty chill. And I would say, like, managing a schedule is, like, one of the biggest ones. Because, like, well, when I was a sophomore, that's when I started, like, working and had a job. So yeah. starting to do that is, like, stressful because you have to manage school, work, sports, talking to bosses, talking to teachers. It can be it can be a lot. And then, like, you're taking your magnet, like, twice a day or is that was that the case for you guys? Or yeah, some magnets have twice a day. So like, um, Academy of Health Professions, that's every day. Yeah. Did you guys have graphics? 
We had graphics every day, but not twice a day. Mm-hmm. No, that means we had ours every day. Yeah, Sorry, not twice a day. Yeah, ours was every day. Oh. Um, I did not know that. But I, <laughs> I definitely agree. Like, sophomore year, even though it's pretty chill, well, I guess for us it was very chill because it was Yeah, being all, online, for, we all know. virtual. We all know. Let, but but it still had a lot of know. stressors. But, yeah. Lila, you had an in-person. Well, I lied in in-person <laughs> sophomore year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In-person <laughs> sophomore year. I actually think it was really great. Especially because, like, the actual, like, interactions, especially in Academy of Health Professions. Because a lot of stuff you do and learn, like, you really learn it better doing it in person. Like, bed making, getting CPR certified, like, basic life support certified, and first aid. Especially taking it in person was better. And, like, the sports as well. It was easier doing sports in person with schoolwork as well. The schedule just flowed better. Yeah. yeah, like uh, like she was saying about um, the certifications and stuff like that. It, depending on your magnet and how many is required or how many you can do, it can definitely pile up because you feel like you're like, um, you know, Legon says, look at everybody, they're your competition. Like these people, <laughs> like <laughs> it, it, shout, shout out, out to Legon, shout out Legon, <laughs> give me that. Okay, so <laughs> that like he was saying, like everybody is. Everybody is your competition, but you don't want to think about it like that. Like, yeah. sometimes that can be a really, like, that can really get to people in that mm-hmm. mindset. So just to be able to do what you can and, like, remember, some of these schools, they're not getting any certifications. So the fact that we have certifications is that just take what you can get. So. Yeah, I see people look at, like, health professionals like, oh, they have all the certifications and my magnet, like, hasn't even, like, done one yet. But it's, like, it's really, like, okay, like... Yeah. Some people in this country and like who go to other high schools are not gonna get certifications. Like if you get one, great. If you don't, you don't. Like it's you're yeah. gonna be okay. It's not gonna determine if you're getting into college or not. Yeah. We promise, guys. Right. We promise. On the also, resume it's not gonna say you failed this certification. It's no, gonna say if you have it or not and then, then You're still gonna look great. Um, I definitely understand, like, it can be very stressful. Even though we took our certifications junior year, yeah. I was still really stressed out. Mr. Allen was really honest about it, and I really wanted to do well. And it was just a lot, considering that we had a lot going on with PSATs and preparing for other stuff. Let's talk about but, PSATs. Let's really get into it. Yeah, PSAT in sophomore year. Was PSAT. The worst. Yeah. Well, well, we didn't take it. PSAT. No, okay. Well, PSAT is <laughs> no, bad I it, overall. I took it, uh, just sophomore year PSAT. How was that? It was pretty fine. Um, they gave us like a book to study, so I don't think you should stress too much. But it definitely will determine if you'll take AP classes junior year. That's a big stressor for yeah. many people. That's a lot. Cause imagine like your PSAT score really does define whether you get into, into a AP certain class, AP class. Yeah. Especially because like I know a lot of people are like, oh, I want to take AP Psych. Like maybe, what if you can't take it because you're P- like that? I can understand why that would mess with somebody's head. And, like, like that's really bad. It really, it's a really big thing about like your math or chemistry track. Like, for me, I remember that, like, I think my math score was, like, low. Like, it was, like, I couldn't take a certain math class or something. Or something like that happened. I think that might happen my freshman year. Or something like that. But, yeah, your PSAT is, like, they use it a lot to, like, to put you into stuff. So it's, like, stressful because, like, you want to, like, do your best. Mm -hmm. But, like, you don't want to care at the same time because, like, it's another standardized test. And then, again, again, with the academic validation, the students at this school, the, the way they talk about an SAT good. score after we get the results, no, it's, it's so crazy. How oh, like, yes. what did you get? What did you get? I got like they don't that need whole to talk type of talk it. is just so like it's so not needed. Junior yeah. year when they released those scores, first period, literally Ooh. everybody was everybody on was it. on the phone, refreshing the page, yes. talking about what you get, hiding their score, turning their brightness down. <laughs> yeah. Literally, but we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. Yeah. Later. But, um, <laughs> Um, we can start, I guess, going into that. At the end of sophomore year, you have a lot of parental pressure because that's when you really, really are going into your junior year where you have to start thinking about college and scholarships mm-hmm. and, like, what do you want to do preparing for your SAT? And, like, and that, people making sure they have, like, enough AP classes. And right, kind of right. And that really does go into your junior year where you're – obviously, you have the constant reminders. It can be really stressful when you start off junior year with constant reminders of the SAT. It can get really stressful. Every day. Yes. The countdown. Yes. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, yeah. 2, 1. You will never forget because they will let you know. They yes. will let you know. Especially because last year was my first time taking an AP class. Um, so I was already, like, really nervous about that. Okay. So having to think about taking the SAT, which is all the way in April, and starting in a new AP class was really overwhelming. So I was like, now I have to prepare for an AP test, which is coming up two weeks later. Yep. And so yes. thinking about that in the future, starting in September, is really stressful. And so I definitely understand that. Like, they put you – if you take ST prep or anything – 
like my SAT prep was B1 of first semester. Yeah. So yeah. like the first day, like the first few days of school, like I'm getting like SAT stuff just like shot in my head. Like the first day of school, like yeah, and also like if you're taking like PS like an SAT prep class like second semester in the SAT you're taking it right in the middle of that class which can be stressful because like you're depending on that class to help you yeah to yeah. help you I will say like it depends on definitely your preference whether you want to take it first semester or second semester but you definitely want to figure that out soft the, the I didn't get a summer. say yeah, yeah I, didn't I, didn't get get a say. I didn't get a say I didn't get a say oh I literally asked in, to have it second semester. Okay, okay. Cool. well, that's an option, <laughs> so the summer before junior year, definitely don't just get your classes and then be like, okay, whatever. If you see something that you want particularly, or you don't want to take this, you got to go to your guidance counselor and get that checked out. Because, we love guidance. Yeah. We'll get into that later. Yes. Let me Mr. <laughs> but like, you got to get that, because doing that stuff, first week of school, second week of school, it's just it's so much, even more it's stressful. extra, yeah. and they're... I'm not going to lie, I didn't believe it, but they were right. Junior year is a very, if not yeah. one of the most important years. Like, I it really is. don't want to say this, but like, I'm going to say anyways. Like, I would not, you cannot pay me money to relive junior year. Like, no, like it was just a lot happened very that I, just too much. Like, oh, yes. SAT, having like, get your GPA up. Because one thing, like, your GPA, like, once it's going down, like, it's real easy to, like, go down. Like, bringing it up, yeah, like, you have yeah. to work to bring your GPA back up. So and It goes by so fast. Like, like you wake up one day and you're a junior, like, oh, my gosh. And it just, like, it just all comes at you. Like, getting that SAT score, finding the right college, all that. Yeah. yeah. That in itself, like, again, like, junior year, you got to do your own college searches and figure out what you want in a school you like do you want, want a big school, school a small even school then, like that may change when you get to senior year but you've still got to start it in junior year yeah exactly. and like deciding your major like my major changed like three times my junior year <laughs> do you remember this conversation yes, like, like oh my, she went through many different many different many majors different. <laughs> yeah yeah it's so, like your major's gonna switch and then like your major might switch and they might ha- have it at one school or you might decide like i don't want to go to a big school or then you have to start looking at like whole like completely different schools yeah. And then junior year is also like people just trying to get their resumes up. Mm-hmm. So me personally, don't be the type to just like, okay, junior year, got to literally join everything. I think that should really be a gradual thing to yeah, show consistency definitely. because like just trying to get into as many things as you can junior year, one, that's just a lot. And two, like it kind of looks bad, right? It doesn't yeah, look so good. It's going to take up a lot, especially because like this year was the first time we've had career fair in what? Four years yeah so yeah. I'm, i was jealous because yeah, i look i really would want to do that yeah. yeah getting your resume like ready for that in your portfolio it's like really important especially for those interviews because they look at them and i know some magnets like really stress it like hp they really stress the making sure that portfolio is perfect yeah because you'll meet like a lot of colleges there like potential colleges that you might want to go to and, like this is like your time to like get an internship possibly so it's just really important that you're prepared for that. Yeah. Junior year is like a lot about like building your like resume kind of. So people are joining like the honor societies and like you're getting like your rejection letters back and your acceptance <laughs> letters and like it's just stressful because like you want to set yourself up to have like like to look good in like college admissions eyes, but yeah. there's only so much you can like do. Right. Hit on internships um, again definitely something you should think over um think about all the time the dedication that it is so if you're a student athlete and you have a job the only way i meet a student athlete that has two jobs is able to like have an internship as well is because mine is virtual and like again with us kind of leaving the covid period uh there may not be as many virtual internships so you just got to really realize what your limits are and what you're able to do i think that like so junior year, like the whole internship program, like comes out and it's like a very like they make it a very big deal, or at least they did for yeah, us. I feel like they, they did. Like, they really like advertised it, and it's like a very big deal. And nothing's wrong with it per se, but it's just I think people don't always know what they're getting themselves into when they like are trying to join it, and then they end up right. stressed. Like a lot of people right now who are in it are stressed because they are not getting their hours, or it's like hard to communicate with the coordinator. Like it's just a lot to handle. So. Just make sure, like, you're thinking of what senior year you would, like, want. Like, think long-term when you're looking yeah, at this. Yeah. Because being, having internship is stressful. Having, like, school is stressful. So just, like, think about what everything else you have, like, 
going on. CCBC um, courses on top of that. Yeah. A lot of people do CCBC courses and internship. And then you have sports and clubs. That's just a lot. Yeah. yeah. Just think like, about all your options. Like Moni said, like, think about senior you. Like, think about senior you. Do you want to be doing all this stuff? Or exactly. do you want to have time like, to yeah. yourself? Once you get in these art societies that you're applying for junior year, like, you have to maintain them. Like, just because you're in them does not mean you're in them for life. Like, you have right. to get your 10 hours. Yeah. So mm-hmm. don't join, like, five honor societies and then also not meet the requirements for them right. because you're a senior and, like, you don't want to come to school and stuff. Like, you need to think about that when right. you're a junior, which is stressful, but you need to, like, think. Yeah. I think that very much goes into, like, what junior itis is and, like, Junior itis is a lot about just trying to maintain Ooh. your good grades, but also it's like figuring out your senior year. Literally, like junior year is like figuring, quote unquote, figuring out the rest of your life, kind of. And it's really stressful because when you think about it, it's really, really stressful. Because in my mm. mind, that's how I felt. And when I was trying to figure out my schedule for senior year, that's when I was like, let me not. I bowed out of internship because I was like, I just can't do it. I bowed out too. And I'm, I'm happy, happy I bowed out. I'm happy with yeah. my decision. But I mean, some people, some people really love internship. Blake maybe not so much. <laughs> some people uh, really do like it though. Some I really just, do I like don't, it. Yeah. I know you don't hate it, but maybe I'm like some people are not. Some people just mm. realize that they can't handle it at the last second. Me, I realized that early on that I couldn't, I wasn't gonna be able to balance it all. So what I did, I just ended up becoming a student aide, and I now aid for Miss Lewis and Miss Osborne. And I'm okay with that. And I think he, as juniors, you just need to think about all your options. Like me, I thought about like, okay, if I take this amount of classes, I know my transportation, all this stuff, it'll right. be good for me to t- be an aide. Because I had econ second period and now I don't, but I still have a third period. So I'm an aide during that period instead of like trying to balance out everything and move stuff. Like, especially if there are classes in there like AP Psych and stuff that I do really, really want to take. Right, transportation is also a big thing, so you got to really know if you're going to be driving or not and when you're going to start driving or not. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of the internships, are they start over the summer. So you can see, like, when you if you do one that starts over the summer, like, will you be able to balance it out? Like, just get an idea of the workload, what you'll have to do. Driving is also a big junior year stressor. Oh, yeah. Because, um, like, everyone's starting to drive, and... That driver's test is that driver's test. Really stressful to study for. Hey, I feel. Let's not talk about it. Let's talk about it. I think... <laughs> <laughs> you should go too deep into that. You like, literally, like, it. everyone's like, oh, this is when my appointment is. This is when my appointment is. And, like, oh, did That's you pass? Da, 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 da. Like, oh, how did you feel your first yeah. time? Like, stuff like that. Like, that's, that's stressful. Yeah. Definitely adds um, to junior year. Yeah. And I think, again, like I said, junior year is definitely, like, figuring out the next part of your future. And so now we can go into senior year, which is basically acting on all the plans that you make in junior year. Yeah. Starting off with like making your schedule and internship, which we just talked about. When you make your schedule junior year, just consider like, do you want to have a half day? Do you want to do internship? Do you want to do dual enrollment? Because me, I realize now like I definitely could have fixed up my schedule and I would not have to stay full day. But you know what? I'm going to have to survive with what I got. <laughs> no. Because, so, like, three more months. That four more months. Once you, like, make your schedule and, you know, you tweak it maybe, like, the first week of school, maybe if they let you, when you start, like, for example, econ's a half the semester class. When econ half semester is over, they're not letting you rework your whole schedule around that econ is over. Like, Martinez yeah. is not doing that for you. Okay. So think about that. And it might be stressful, but... Just think and don't over like put too much on your plate because when you get to March of your senior year, you're not going to want to be doing all this. Right. Just, just have to like think about what's best for you, kind of. March is when that senioritis really kicks in, guys. Y'all. But let's talk about like the beginning of senior year college apps. College apps and Ooh. all that. College apps. No, I can't. I'm, I'm going to let them talk because I can't say too much. But yeah, a little miss from what, you over there. <laughs> from what I heard or from what I literally hear from everyone and still like as we're literally in March, like college apps is no joke. It feels it's like not. a class in itself. Like it's- that's how much dedication and time these people are taking. Well, some of them haven't even like some of them haven't like put their results out yet. Like yeah. A&T? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think three seniors here we all know where we're going but yeah. some people like don't have that luxury yeah yeah thankfully like western tech is really good about having the english classes focus w- at least once mini unit on your college app like your college <gasps> Miss essay. Lewis, 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 we love you we, we love, love you. you we literally <laughs> love you the, the feedback reason? i got from my college literally essay, love you. so good yeah. and- um this is um 
Actually, you don't have to be an AP. This is just a Miss Lewis plug. Like, <laughs> having Miss Lewis, you are going to work Get on your summer, yeah. summer up, your college your essay, essay. Take senior it year. All in and everything that she says. If you it's don't so have Miss Lewis, get feedback from like people like Miss Osborne or just like, other teachers in the school. Like, just get as much feedback as possible. Don't get too much feedback. Yeah. Because you don't want to like change you don't, too right. much. I think. Just don't want to be you. Yeah, yeah. I think a good number of people to like review your essay is two. Yeah. And one of them should be a teacher. Because yeah. the teacher is going to know, like, what errors you need to make, especially with grammar. Miss Lewis will get Ooh. you on grammar. Miss Lewis she definitely will help you Ms. with Lewis that. Miss Lewis, know me. I um, can't. I can't with yeah. the grammar. But I'm getting better. But, I'm getting yeah. Better. But college apps as a whole, it was definitely stressful for me because I had this list and I was like, I know what, I know the college that I want to apply to, but it's all like, all these like sub questions and all these. Things that you have to fill out. Then you also have to fill out the FAFSA on October 1st. And, like, that's a whole thing. Like, it's definitely a lot. Like, I didn't even, it's a lot. I, what really got me was, like, I was really confused about Common App as, like, a, th- like, as a whole. Like, yeah, I thought yeah, Common App was, was like, a school-related thing. So I was, like, scared to make an account because I thought I had to, be, like, link to my school and all this stuff. And I was just, like, really I, – I was really confused. Yeah. But, like – Guidance and Miss Monahan, they all the like, you guys. Guidance, guidance. They will probably have an answer for everything. Use your resources. We love using. This resources. is a guidance plug yeah. podcast. Guidance yes. and Miss Lewis podcast. Um, and then also within senior year, is a lot of graduation prep. Mainly that I think that comes more so now March because like if you're in an honor society, you have your stoles you got to pay for, and then you also got to pay for your graduation yeah. cap and your cap and gown. Yeah. But you also have to think about prom. Like there's a lot to think about, yeah. especially because. April is, like, basically over once we get back. And then May is, like, a bunch of AP exams, finals. Like, you really have to start thinking about getting ready for graduation, whether it's, like, getting ready with tickets, whether it's figuring out your cap and gown colors, like, all that stuff. It really does play a factor. Like, it might sound stupid, like, oh, do you want to wear blue or white? No, that matters. It really (laughs) does matter. It it really does, you guys. I was, like, on this for, like, three weeks. Wait, what color did you pick? Blue. I picked blue, too. I did blue as well. Okay. <laughs> okay, but like again to harp on senioritis, you guys, like it is it's real. Uh, it's so it's real. real. It like, is very real. And I didn't think it was it's real. I thought it was so fake. real. <laughs> See, it's so real. I didn't And start some colleges ask for mid year transcripts. And if you have senioritis and you're like literally tanking, you're going down and they ask for that mid year transcript, you're done. It's so, guys, please try your best, especially yeah. like the juniors, even the juniors that are here with us. Like Lila, love, girl, yeah. you next please, year. Please, <laughs> please try and fight junior eyes, especially around this time. Like March, like literally, this is our last full month of school, and in our minds, we're done. We're ready to graduate, right. and it's really hard to combat that, especially like right now. Like this year has been stressful enough, but right now specifically, I'm just like I have a lot going on with whether it's running sports accounts or whether it's getting ready to go to college, like. Putting in all this other information for the college that I'm going to be going to, like all the stuff that goes into that, preparing for that is really stressful. Plus, remembering like, oh, I still have to keep my grades up. I have to make sure that I'm staying involved in my extracurriculars. Like that's a lot, and that does take a lot on you. Right. I think that like you don't want to look back and like regret anything. Like yeah. I would have like I had to work hard my junior year to like bring my GPA back up. Like. I'm not going to say what it was. It's not bad. I just I, it needs to be, like, brought up a little bit. Mm. So I had to work hard my junior year to, like, bring it back up. And I feel like if I let the junior artist, like, get to me, like, I would have been very really dissatisfied with applying to colleges. Right. But yeah. because I, like, worked hard, I'm able to apply to scholarships because my GPA is, like, high. Yeah. And, like, right. I qualify. And same thing for senior artists. Like, you don't want to, like – like not do good your senior year and then like when you get to college like you're struggling like so just work hard so you can like especially your junior year be yeah. happy like yeah. in the future if that makes yeah. sense this is literally why we say junior year is figuring out like your future and senior year is acting on it and we know junior itis and senior itis is real we went through it we understand very junior itis is really hard to keep your grades up senior itis is also really hard just to like not be in the mindset of i just want to leave it's really hard we get it But we advise you to start just really pushing yourself to just make it past that and, like, just really work on assuring that your grades are staying up, assuring that your extracurriculars are looking good. Like, making sure that if you do really want to go to the same career as your magnet, just make sure that you're keeping up with stuff in there, especially, like, talking to teachers so you can have those letters of recommendations ready, like, all that stuff. Everything that you do, even from your freshman year, as stressful as it sounds, it does help, and we really do advise that you guys continue to work hard 
even though it's hard to fight junior and senior is. Yeah, and also, like, don't just start everything. Don't start the good habits senior year. Try and do it as early as possible. So make that relationship with the teacher as early as possible so when they write that letter of recommendation, it doesn't sound like they can be talking about literally anybody. Like, at least, like, I- I'm confident I can say, like, for a letter of recommendation, like, these teachers know me. And so when they talk about me, I can have an idea what they're going to say and they like they know my character. And also think about AP classes and um, CCBC. We talked about a little earlier, but like, just think about it. What college credits do you potentially want to have? Like, I know for me, I don't want to do my major isn't like something that has to do with STEM being mathematics. So I really want to get this AP um, calc done. So like, I don't have to do math in college. So it's just little things like that you want to really think about before going in that are really important. Yeah, yeah. that kind of goes into some of our coping skills. So I think that really does go into like our very first one, which is like preparing for upcoming stressful situations. It can be really stressful to think about like college and what you really need for your major. Go ahead, Blake. (laughs) Sorry. Just one thing I want to say about college. It is okay. Things are going to change. Like college itself, the school you want to go to is going to change. Reality, financially, comfortability, things are going to change. You may like want it to go like such a prestige or big school like all your life but when like you may have to be a little bit more like realistic and then like things change and that's okay don't let that yeah. stress you out or feel like it's like a panic yeah definitely because nothing ever goes as planned so you just gotta be able to be ready for that situation and just have a plan yeah and like just know that like another coping skill to deal with all this like mental health stuff that goes on throughout high school socializing and meeting with your friends and like just not focusing on school for a little bit like if you go out with your friends for like an hour or two school's gonna be there when you come back and it's just such a relief to just go out with them and not worry about school it doesn't need to be school all the time like yes it's important but it's not like the end-all be-all yeah I definitely agree okay at the beginning of the year I definitely had a lot of stress And it was just, it was nice when one day, like, the soccer team was like, oh, let's go out for ice cream. And that was just a really nice night just to be able to hang out with all my friends and just take a nice break from school and just not have to think about school. And that is, like, one of the best things to honestly happen. Like, when you have time to yourself or with your friends, you just get to, like, step away from school and just have fun and, like, laugh. It's really nice because when you come back, you have a clear mindset and you're not, like, super stressed about, like, oh, you have an upcoming test. Like, now you can be, like, clear-minded when you're studying for that test rather than being super, super stressed with 10 things on your mind. Yeah, being locked in your room or wherever you study and do homework and that's literally all you knew. All you know is, like, you wake up, you go to school, and you come home, and then you do schoolwork, and then you go to sleep, like, and then we repeat. (laughs) That's just... (laughs) It's a lot. That's just not a way to live, like... Um, you cannot maintain that for a yeah. long period of time without burning out. It will right. catch up. To, I can attest to that. Burnout it will catch up real. to you. Burnout is yeah. real. You need to avoid that, like, at all costs, pretty much. Because that's really going to, like, spiral your mental health out of control if you burn out. Yeah. So I, really prioritize, like, taking a break, socializing with your friends, talking yeah. to people. Can we plug guidance like right now? We love guidance. Miss Monahan, we Ms. love Monahan, you. I Ms. love Gould, you. We love you too. Severnia. They're always here for you guys. I promise you, like, if you get a pass to see Miss Monahan, like, at this point, they know me on a first name Ms. basis. Miss Irby knows me too. <laughs> like, they're like, okay, when, when do you want to come in? But basically, if you go to really any one of them, because I know there are some people that literally go, like, even though it's not their letter, like, they go to Miss Ma- Monahan. I'm pretty sure Amani yeah, goes to Yeah, my last name's definitely Ward and <laughs> W. Miss Monahan definitely like, H or what, M. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm always just going in there and I'm just updating her. And she's always offering ways to make things feel better, like, to make you feel better and ways to cope with your stress, especially, like, the days that I've gone in. And she's just known, like, I'm really, really stressed. And she just gives you really good strategies on how to cope with that and i think that's a really good like really really important like you don't have to go to guidance for just stress or like Mm -hmm. sorry not just stress but college like i that was my mindset all three years of high school even when i had it virtually like even when they had the guidance office as an option i didn't know i could go to them honestly i just like kind of was like i don't really want to talk to them about it but now i'm okay with it and like miss monahan is 100 percent there for me every single time and i feel like it's like a school thing like the the meaning of the guide of being a guidance counselor like really it warped in our in like students heads and like nyla said i really felt like 
they're just for like school schedule like college yeah and i like forgot that it's literally their job so if you're stressed <laughs> or something like they know how to help you yeah i feel like yeah. i've never had such like good guidance counselors like i don't remember having relationships with my guidance counselors in like middle school or like elementary school they just were kind of like there and then like junior year like i started talking with Monty and i was in there all the time i used to talk to mr vernia a lot miss school i talked to her about some college stuff too but like they will all work together to help you and i think a lot of people Mis- don't judge. want to go to guidance not because they don't like not like the people like they're all nice women like yeah. they're yeah, cool they're great nice. they're but great. they don't know what to go in and say i guess so i would say if you're really like going through it and you feel like you need the help just talk to them if you don't like miss Avernia and she's not for you then try miss monahan if you don't like yeah. miss monahan try miss school like they're all here for every you. somebody at the school will be there for There's you always you just have to go out your way a little bit yeah i think one of the biggest things i'm not gonna go too deep but last year do you guys remember in january um, oh yeah. yeah the junior class was hit hard well senior class now we were hit kind of hard and they the guidance counselors they really did pull through for us um because they knew like we were going through a lot and it may have, it may not have seemed like it, but I know a lot of people can attest to the fact that like it was they helped out Miss Monet like all of them they were very helpful. They were BCPS on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, BCPS. Um, um, but yeah, next we can go into like prioritizing putting in school versus like you're putting mental health in school, like making sure that that's on a good balance. So Lila, do you want to go into that? I think that. Now we're going to get into prioritizing because that can be, like, a main thing, a main stressor, balancing out your, like, time and time management. So it's important with prioritization to make sure that before you even prioritize, you should make, like, a timeline, especially of, like, what you need to do. And you should definitely know what's most important because there are things that are important, but, um, like, important socially. Like, say you need to make a social event, and that's important, especially for colleges. But, um... Sports are important as well, but, like, would that be as important as, like, an AP test coming up or studying for, like, a big exam? So you just have to know, like, sometimes things are just going to have to come first, and you're just going to have to cut short on other things because it'll, like, help you in the long run especially. So just knowing, like, what to prioritize is probably, like, a really big thing to, like, help you with that stress. And one thing also, like, don't, I mean, don't spend all your time, like, studying, like, I know there's some people out there that are really just like steady, 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 but like don't fry your brain. There is something such as too much studying. Right. I feel like like you're not going to be able to cram that whole textbook in your brain. Like I, I guarantee you. Yeah, it's okay to like take your time. This is why I heavily push the success, the success guides or buy your own planner. I use my success guide every single day. <laughs> I used to sit next to Nyla last year in U.S. history, I'm and she'd be jotting. <laughs> Yes, it's, very, it's it's helpful for me. Like I write down like Miss Lewis, she's really good about giving us dates and stuff. Oh yeah, I so write I down like those the dates. Book quiz like, tomorrow. Yeah, it's really it's very helpful. So I personally push the success guys. I know not everybody's for that. Like you can find something on your phone, but me personally, I think to a really good way to prioritize and balance out your schoolwork is using the success guides and really writing out everything because you might have a like a long term project. Like we have an essay to write. I'm going to, I can start progressively writing it because I know when the due date is. Right. And always make sure, like, if your teacher isn't clear about a due date, definitely get that clear. Yeah. I think, like, with that being said, I think that another, like, kind of coping skill that's, like, underrated or, like, maybe might not be seen as a coping skill, it's kind of just, like, communication. Like, just going to your teachers and talking to them about, like, where you are mentally or if you need a break or mm-hmm. if you're having questions or you're like, I don't understand the content right now. Like, you need to communicate that and advocate for yourself. Especially in college, like, no one is going to be, like, checking in on you and making sure right. that you understand. So you need to make sure you take it upon yourself to go to your teachers and say, hey, like, I'm struggling right now. Like, I need help. Because if you're not asking for help, they can't give it to you unless you go get it, pretty much, type deal. Yeah. Professors, like, and depending on your school, professors, they're – they're only there to teach the class. If there is nothing to say, if no one says anything, they're gone. Mm, that's some teachers now, but we won't get into mm. <laughs> <laughs> But not p- teachers like Pags or Carlino, great teachers. Like just to start off, because one, they're very approachable and they're definitely going mm-hmm. to communicate to you. 
So definitely, like um, Mamani said, just advocate for yourself. Get in the habit of doing that because you're going to really need it in college. Um, so like just the last thing, um, organization can be really important and help with time management. So just like maybe downloading an app or starting off with a piece of paper, just write down the homework that you get because I know like it can be really easy to forget like assignments and just not turn them in. So I think it's important that you just find your like your app or your notepad, whatever that is, to just write stuff down and you can organize it and you know just plan out like when you're gonna do it and that can definitely deal with a lot of the stress. Yeah, I definitely agree. So we're about to close out and I just wanna start talking about a pamphlet that is available in the guidance office. As you guys heard, we love guidance and we have a lot to say, but all around the school, whether you're in the front office or if you're in guidance, there are pamphlets and they basically talk about mental health. And um, this pamphlet has a whole bunch of BCPS resources and Maryland resources and a whole bunch of facts about mental health because we know that mental health is so, so incredibly important, especially right now. Especially among high schoolers. Exactly, especially in high school. And we really do need everyone to start looking at them and just start talking to your guidance counselors and really opening up to them and letting them know, like, what you're stressed about because we know, we understand, all of us understand that high school is stressful. Western yeah. tech itself is stressful. It's a very competitive school. We just gave very. you the breakdown of stresses for every single grade, freshman to senior. Yeah. So, like, you, there's going to be a time you're going to be stressed out and you yeah. need to know how to deal with it. And just know, like, it's, like, not the end of the world. Like, you'll be okay. And, like, everything is, like, workable. Like, you will be able yeah. to move on from it. There's help available. So, again, if you need to find resources on how to cope with mental health or if you just need to know, like, what are some warning signs about maybe, a de- like, deteriorating mental health, there are um, some in there in that um, pamphlet. And you can find them all around the school. You can find them in the guidance office in front of Ms. Irby's desk. And you can also find the BCPS calming room on a QR code on the purple poster posted literally all around the school. So there are so many resources. So please, please, please use them, whether it's guidance, the pamphlets or whatever. And please don't knock these things until you try it. Yeah. Don't be a part of the people that don't believe in mental health or believe that mental health is like only in like actual mental illnesses and disorders. You'll learn in psych. You'll definitely learn in psych. <laughs> there are mental health, like people are suffering from mental health at any level and from anywhere. So definitely if you feel as though you're bottling up too much stuff or you feel like you can't talk to people, this is probably your sign that you need to seek some type of resource. If you go to guidance, tell them we sent you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, tell them we sent you. We are. <laughs> tell them we sent you. Yes. Um, CJ, she's our editor. She's the one editing yeah. this. CJ, yes. Thank you, yes. CJ. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, just taking everything we said. You can use it like post high school. Yeah. And with that, check you on three. One, two, three. Check you out.